So students, the first four forests are easy. If you just know rainfall, like very high rainfall, moderate, less, very less rainfall, you can learn those four types of forests. Now there are two more unique forests. One is mountain forest, one is mangrove forest. They are unique in their own way. So now we will learn about them in detail. Mountain forests will of course be found in the mountains. And where are mountains found in India? The Himalayas. Of course, the trees and plants which grow on the slopes of the mountains are called mountain forests. In India, they occur in the Himalayas and to a very small extent in the Nilgiri Hills, that is a point where Western and Eastern Ghats meet. The plants and trees vary. Vary means change. So, assuming you are just starting to climb the Himalayas in the beginning, you will find different kinds of trees. The higher you go, there will be a whole different variety. And even more higher you go, again the variety changes. So as you keep going higher in height or altitude, the variety of trees also keep on changing. So the plants and trees vary with increasing altitude. The important trees are oak, chestnut, ash, beech, pine, cedar, spruce, fir, deodar and walnut. Students, we know in cold regions we wear fur. So fur is a very easy example to learn. Pine is also easy. So I will learn pine and fur. So you wore a fur coat anyway, pineapple. Remember it like that for trees found in the mountain forest. Lastly, mangrove forest. These are found in wet marshy areas. So they are mainly found in areas where river meets the sea. The soil there has a certain amount of salt. So for a tree to grow, it must be able to withstand the salt that there is in the water. So they are found in river deltas and along the sea coast washed by the tides. They are found in the deltas of river on the eastern coast of India and in pockets on the western coast of India. So see, these are the mangrove regions of India. The important trees are Rhizophora, Canes, Screw Pine, Palms, Sundari. Sundari is a very important example you all should learn. The tree trunks are supported by a number of stilt like roots which are submerged under water. Do you all see these roots? They help the plant to filter soil and take the water through its xylem tissue. So students, we learned what is a forest, importance of forest, the six types of forest. We also learned the features and examples of these six types of forests. Now let us understand the distribution of these forests in India. The total forest area of India is about 7.74 lakh kilometer square. It accounted for 23.6% of the total area. This is much below the 33.3% target that's recommended by the National Forest Policy Resolution of 1952. Is this below the global average? Yes, the global average is 29.5%. If you ask me, ma'am, are these values important? The percentages are important. The 7.74 lakh square kilometer is not so important. Forests in India are not evenly distributed. Like it's not like if you go to a particular state, you'll only find forests and then no forests. It's not like that. It's very uneven. You'll find small forests, then suddenly you'll find large forests and then no forests. It's like it's very uneven. Nearly 60% of the forest area of the country is in the Himalayas and in the peninsular hills. And 20% is in the northern plains. Among the states of India, Madhya Pradesh has the largest area under forest and Goa has the least. Both Madhya Pradesh being the largest, Goa being the smallest, very important as a one mark fill in the blank in your examination. Conservation of forest. What is the meaning of conservation? There is so much of forest that's being lost because of deforestation and other activities. How can we have more forest? Let us look at it. They play a very, very important role in the national economy of India. But the area under forest has been declining for various selfish reasons of 
man. Why? By expansion of agricultural land, construction of roads and railways, irrigation projects, industrialization, urbanization, overgrazing, forest fires, all of these are main reasons for destruction of forests. You all should know at least four of them. So the conservation of forests for future generations is essential. So when we prevent the destruction, over exploitation of forests and we manage it, it's called conservation of forests. For a one marker, very, very important definition. So it's the second definition that's very important. First definition was what is forest? Now the second most important definition is what is conservation of forests? So what are the measures that we can take to conserve forests? Control deforestation, restrict grazing, control forest fires, prevent encroachment on forests, control forest insects and diseases, control illegal cutting of trees, scientific cutting of trees, pass laws to stop or to check deforestation, encourage afforestation, create awareness among people about the importance of forests. So students, I would encourage all of you to go plant a tree, not a plant, but plant a tree so that we have more forests in our country. So next thing we will learn is about wildlife sanctuaries and national parks in India. Students, do you know what is a wildlife sanctuary? Have you ever been to one? Do you all know of any wildlife sanctuary in Karnataka? I can hear some answers. Good, now let us learn about them. Definition of a wildlife sanctuary, very important. Definition of a national park, very important. Definition of a biosphere reserve is also important. Also, very common question asked in exam is differentiate between these three. Wildlife sanctuary refers to a place meant for providing protection to wildlife. So, in this area, wildlife is protected. It's an area where killing or capturing of any species of animals is prohibited except under orders of any competent or forest authority. How many wildlife sanctuaries are there? 523 in India. What are the important ones? Annamalai and Madhumalai in Tamil Nadu, Dandeli, Bhadra, Talakaveri, Biyar Hills. These are four in Karnataka. You should know them all. Periyar in Kerala, Nagarjuna Sagar in Telangana, Bharatpur and Ranathambur in Rajasthan, Manas in Assam, Jaldapara in West Bengal. Please learn at least two examples. Next we learn about national parks. It's an extensive area, a very vast area and especially protected to preserve its natural beauty, wildlife, and forest for public recreation and scientific interest is called national park. So in wildlife century if you saw it was a region where wildlife is protected. There is no capturing and killing of animals allowed but here everything the entire region the plants the ecology everything is protected. Forestry grazing agricultural activities are not allowed here. Whereas in wildlife sanctuary, it is not so strict. There are 99 national parks in India. Again, you all should know at least 3 to 4 examples. Some important national parks of India are Khaziranga in Assam. Very famous for one horned rhino. You all should see on YouTube, it's so beautiful, the one horned rhino of Khaziranga National Park in Assam. Sundarbans. Sundarbans is in a mangrove forest in West Bengal. Corbett in Uttarakhand. Gir in Gujarat, very famous for lions, Kanha in Madhya Pradesh, Bandipur, Banargata and Nagarahole in Karnataka. When it comes to Karnataka, you should know all the names. Sariska in Rajasthan, Dhudwa in Uttar Pradesh and Tadoba in Maharashtra. You all must also know to plot these in the map, especially the ones in Karnataka. Next students, you will learn about biosphere reserves. They are a special category of protected area of land and coastal environments. Here people are an integral component of the system. So if you notice in wildlife 
sanctuary in national parks we never spoke about the people but in a biosphere reserve even the people are an important component so what is the objective what is the goal the objectives are for conservation research education and for local involvement in maintaining the ecosystem in india there are 18 biosphere reserves they are nilgiris nanda devi nokrek manas great nicobar gulf of manar sundarbans simpilal kanchanjunga panchmari agastya male dibru saikova bihang the bang and so on students you all can use this map and plot all the 18 biosphere reserves now let's do the back side exercises on page number 118 first question the forest do not shed their leaves or all, all at the same time in the year such a forest is called tropical evergreen forest Question two: The Himalayas have this type of forest. Himalayas is a mountain, so of course it has mountain forests. The forests are mainly found in the deltas of rivers. It starts with M again. Mangroves. Very good. What is meant by forest, students? I told you on this definition will come. A large area of land covered with trees and under and undergrowth is called forest. Question two. Name the area where desert vegetation is found in India. The Thar Desert, including parts of Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, and the Deccan Plateau. Mention any four measures for the conservation of forests. Very easy. So many are there. You can write any four. Control of deforestation, restriction on grazing, control of forest fire, control of forest insects and diseases. controlling illegal cutting of trees scientific cutting of trees legislation or laws to check deforestation encourage afforestation create awareness among the people about the importance of forest so students this brings us to the end of the chapter i hope you all will learn this chapter as it's so easy and it will also give you lots of marks Okay students i hope you will practice the subjective the objective questions and especially the map when it comes to forest see you until then bye bye